Was Mars once like Earth? Was Mars canyons and valleys and craters filled with water rushing through and carving the landscape? Or rather, has it just been barren like it is now for all of its lifetime? Well, the Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution mission was sent to Mars to answer those exact same questions. So in this episode, we're going to cover those and see what exactly it's been able to find. So let's talk about that. So in a lot of the images that we see from orbiters around Mars, you can kind of see a landscape that you can imagine was carved by water, right? Well, there's a problem. On current Martian atmosphere and temperatures, liquid water wouldn't exist, or unless it's salty water, but liquid fresh water wouldn't exist. And that is because the average temperature is around negative 67 degrees Fahrenheit on Mars, and the average pressure is only 6% of that here on Earth. Now if you use this chart, you can see that liquid water wouldn't even exist anywhere close to that, and it'd either be solid or vapor depending on what era it is in. However, if we can imagine an atmosphere that's a little bit thicker and a temperature that's a little bit warmer, you would actually get into the regions where liquid water would exist. And this is exactly what the Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution mission is trying to do. Also known as MAVEN, it's trying to understand, was the atmosphere larger at one point in time? Has it been lost over time and why has it been lost? And by answering these questions, it'll not only be able to understand why Mars lost its atmosphere, but how we could potentially be losing or gaining our atmosphere, and what terraforming Mars could look like in the future. How does the MAVEN mission understand whether or not atmosphere is being lost or is going away? Well, to begin, you have to also understand a little bit about how water itself can leave an environment or a planet. So when water goes from liquid to a gas, it evaporates, and when it does so, it goes up into the atmosphere and floats around for a little while. Well, here on Earth, there's an ozone layer that protects the water molecules underneath from harmful UV or radiation from the sun. But on Mars, that doesn't exist. So what happens is the harmful radiation from the sun actually breaks apart those water molecules, separating the oxygen from the hydrogen atoms. And since hydrogen is the lightest element, it floats to the top of the atmosphere and just kind of waits and sits there until either ionized particles from the sun or the magnetic field from the sun gets strong enough where it pushes the hydrogen away. So what MAVEN is able to do, it's able to determine the changes in hydrogen in the upper atmosphere of Mars to see how that is changing over time, whether there's more or less, and where exactly that's happening at. And that tells it how exactly Mars is losing its atmosphere. So MAVEN, taking all this information and connecting the dots between what the upper atmosphere looks like in terms of hydrogen and ions that are existing, and what the solar radiation and how that is changing throughout its orbit around the sun, put together can determine a lot about how it's losing its atmosphere. Now, there are a few instruments on board that help do this. First of all, there's the particles and field package that's created by Berkeley, the remote sensing package that was created by the University of Colorado at Boulder, and a neutral gas and ion spectrometer package that was created by Goddard Space Flight Center. So MAVEN has been able to use these packages to, well, prove its theory. It found out that Mars is actually losing its atmosphere, and even more so, it theorized that Mars is losing its atmosphere because since the inner core, or the molten core, cooled down a long time ago, that made the magnetosphere around Mars much weaker, which means it wasn't able to hold in as many ions, and the solar effects made more of an impact. It also was a little bit different because people thought that Mars was constantly losing about the same amount throughout its entire lifespan or one Martian year. However, that's not the case. When Mars is at its closest point to the Sun, or perihelion, it actually loses 10 more times the amount of solar or the amount of hydrogen atoms in the upper atmosphere than it does at its aphelion or the farthest distance away from the Sun. This was a great discovery because it shows that depending on where you are in its orbit, it actually makes a large impact. Now one of the last major discoveries that MAVEN has made over the last couple of years is that it picked up an aurora that's about 24 times larger than any other aurora that would seen. And this was kind of out of the blue because no one was expecting this solar storm to hit. Now what does this mean? Well, a lot of times when you talk about sending humans to Mars, you hear radiation as being a problem. And this aurora that hit Mars actually ended up causing the radiation levels on the surface to go twice as high as what they normally are. So if we had humans on the surface, they would have to take extra precautions to be safe in this area. So MAVEN not only is understanding the, the atmosphere around Mars, but is also understanding how radiation plays an effect 
and could potentially impact people that would be on the surface. So in this episode, we've covered Mavith. We've talked about what its purpose is, how it's able to understand the different aspects about the Martian atmosphere, and what instruments on board and what discoveries it's been able to make. In the next episode, we're going to talk about the basics of terraforming the Martian atmosphere. What would be required to do so, and is it even possible? Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.